how do we create proteins from DNA? So the first step is transcription. The next step is translation. So what is transcription? Is getting information from the DNA and creating RNA. What is translation? Is getting the RNA and from the RNA creating proteins. Here's a sequence of pictures showing you how this happens. So once the proteins are created, they need to be processed. They need to be processed in order to be transformed into something that is going to be useful for the body, such as enzyme, channels, second messengers, uh, cell identity markers, part of your cell membrane. Another example, sodium potassium pump. Synthesizing of compounds other than proteins, yes, we produce other things, not just proteins, but every single thing that is produced in your body is produced because there is an enzyme that is a protein that is going to make the production of something else, such as, for example, glycogen or fat possible. DNA replication and the cell cycle. First part right here, it shows DNA replication. Why? Because for example, if you have one cell, you have the DNA. But what happens if you need to create two cells? Then you need to have two sets of DNA. So that one cell can get one set of DNA and the other cell can get another cell of DNA. So then what is replication, the creation of DNA from DNA? In what circumstances, for example, when you have to create another cell? Obviously, there's a set of steps that are necessary in order to create DNA from DNA. And those steps are the ones that you have right here. The most important part that you need to know is that there is an enzyme called DNA polymerase. The DNA polymerase is the one that is going to make the creation of another DNA possible. The cell cycle. The cell cycle has two parts, the green one and the brown one. The green one is what the cell does every single day, its job. And the brown one is when the cell needs to divide in order to create two cells. So let's take a look at this part in green. That part in green is called interface. Interface has three different phases. G1 is when the cell is doing everything again that the cell needs to do every single day. Eventually, the cell is going to say, OK, I need to divide. When the cell says, I need to divide, the cell will go into the S phase. The S phase is the duplication of the DNA, which is DNA replication. Now, imagine again that this cell has five liters of cytoplasm. So then the cell must create another five liters. So this cell can get five liters of cytoplasm and five liters of cytoplasm. So basically, you need to duplicate everything. So the duplication of everything else in your body, other than the DNA, because the DNA was created already right here in the S phase, the duplication of everything falls under the phase called G2. So then you already duplicated the DNA. You already duplicated everything else. Now you go to this part, the brown part, which is called the mitotic phase, in which the cell is ready to create two other cells. Why? Because the cell is already with two sets of everything. So one set can go at the end to one cell and the other set can go to the other cell. The cell division, the mitotic phase, has multiple steps. They are called phases. The first one is prophase, you have metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. After you have the two cells, then this cell will go again into interphase, and this other cell will go into interphase. Now we can take a look at how the mitotic phase or mitosis actually happens. So what is mitosis? The creation of two cells. You have in here the different steps, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. This dark area is the chromosome. Right here, the chromosome separate, and right here you have the two cells with the chromosomes in there. Errors and mutations. So when you are copying the DNA by the process called replication, sometimes that copying of this DNA is done with mistakes, with errors. So remember we said that the A always is with T and the C is always with G. So imagine sometimes they put A with G instead of A with T. So that's a mutation. Sometimes these mutations can be fixed, sometimes cannot be fixed. A lot of times when these mutations cannot be fixed, that cell turns into cancer. The next topic is chromosomes and heredity. Again, we said that we get 46 chromosomes from our parents, half from your mom, half from your dad. We said 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. When you put together all of them, that's a karyotype. It was a karyotype, the picture of all your chromosomes, the 46 chromosomes that you have. So right here is a picture of all your chromosomes in pairs. And this is your karyotype, half of it from your mom, half of it from your dad. These chromosomes are going to provide you all the information and all the information is located in genes. So let's say your mom has curly hair and your dad has straight hair. The location of this gene for hair is called locus. Since you got two 
types of information, straight hair and curly hair, those are going to be alleles. So imagine that all your brothers and your sisters, everybody gets a straight hair. So that means that a straight hair is dominant and curly hair is recessive. You can have identical alleles. So for example, we said that if you have a straight hair and curly hair, so those are not identical alleles, therefore that's heterozygous. But imagine that you have a straight hair from your dad and straight hair from your dad then that's homozygous. So then you show a straight hair that is your phenotype, but in your genes inside of you, you have curly and a straight, that is your genotype. So what your mom and your dad give you, that's genotype, but the one that you show that everybody can see, that's the phenotype. Okay, there's obviously other ways to explain the genetics that are going to happen, and that's multiple alleles, codominance, incomplete dominance, um, you have environmental effects, 